Since 1968, in the Mexico City Olympics, Kenyan and Ethiopian runners have dominated the middle and long distance athletic events, exhibiting comparable dominance in international cross country and road racing events. Champion for 2018, Tom Gabrisalasi. Brilliant, she punches the air. Scientists have put forward several hypotheses as to the reason of these great victories in marathons and races. So I took some time to go through the research, and this is what I found out. The optimism, there's the lifestyle, the altitude that they live at, which is was a great help. Um, genetically, I think they're you know, they're built um, to run distance. Some of these factors have been objectively examined in the laboratory, while others have been evaluated from the observational perspective. In general, it appears that the victories of the Kenyan and Ethiopian runners is not based on any unique genetic or physiological characteristics. Rather, it appears that these results are because of favorable somatotypical characteristics that lead to exceptional biological chemical and metabolic economy efficiency. Chronic exposure to high altitude in combination with moderate to high intensity training and a strong psychological motivation to succeed have been put forward as some of the reasons. Although dismissed by many people as racist, scientists have had to confront the greatest taboo in sports that somehow black athletes, especially those of East African descent, are genetically programmed to to run faster than their white counterparts. <laughs> In one of the most comprehensive studies yet, scientists explored the biological differences between African and European athletes, and their findings confirm what has been suspected for a while. First, Africans have greater stamina and speed as compared to their European counterparts. Um, obviously, to rule out that genetic programming had anything to do with athletic prowess, the genetic ancestry of elite East African athletes was investigated using the unique unique genetic markers found within the mitochondrial DNA. Now, I made a whole video about this technology and how it has been used to trace back the existence of a woman who lived in the present day Botswana by the name the mitochondrial Eve that is linked in the pop-up banner. When this method was applied, the results revealed that the athletes did not show any difference or any inherently genetic superiority as compared to the general population. Therefore, the mitochondrial DNA haplogroup diversity found in both Ethiopia and Kenya could not be attributed to the success of the athletes. Why chromosome research was also conducted on the athletes and the results were the same. No sign of genetic superiority was found in either the Kenyan or Ethiopian athletes. So it's not genetic. So what exactly supports the high speed and endurance that these athletes possess? Danish scientists spent 18 months in the Kenyan town of El Dorit, the so-called home of champions, where the top 20 long distance runners live. The people from this region hail from the Kalenjin community and have somehow possessed the ability to effortlessly gain victories in almost all athletic events that they have taken part in, including short races and marathons, raising great questions and debates within the sports scientific fraternity. The scientists compared the Kenyan running style and physique with that of their Danish counterparts. Their first finding was that the heart rates of the athletes were remarkably slow even when running at over 15 miles per hour. The region where these athletes are found is located on a plateau over 7,000 feet above sea level, causing an increase in the number of red blood cells that carry oxygen around the body. And this is hypothesized to be behind the slower heart rate. In addition to this, the experts also observed that the African athletes had long legs that were much thinner than their European counterparts, helping them to bounce and skip over the ground, taking off faster after each footfall. The European athletes, on the other hand, landed heavily onto the ground and had to pull themselves forward with much more intensity, making the scientists describe them as pullers as compared to the African athletes who are called bouncers, not that kind of bouncer. The scientists also found that Challenge 
students from a particular region in the Nandi Hills outperformed all other Kenyans in athletic activities. Other Kenyans like me, clearly I can't run. To test whether these athletes were born with talent, scientists devised an experiment. The scientists chose three groups of schoolboys at random. One group from Denmark, another group from Nandi Hills, and another group from people of a different community in Eldoret. Mind you, all the schoolboys chosen for this experiment had never undergone any athletic training. Over the next three months, these three groups competed against each other in a 10,000 meter race. To absolutely no one's surprise, the schoolboys from the Nandi Hills group outperformed both the Danish group and the other boys from Eldoret. In fact, to confirm that their results were not a fluke, the Danish scientist pitted the three boys from the Nandi Hill group against the top athletes from Denmark, like Thomas Nolan. After the race, the Danish athlete was interviewed and this is what he said. In the beginning of the race, the boys from Nandi Hills ran very fast. It was a hot day and therefore he had the confidence that they would soon get tired and would slow down because they had no experience in running unlike him. But over 12 and a half laps, the three novice runners from Nandi Hills maintained their lead. The Danish athlete could not catch up with them and in fact, the boys kept getting farther and farther ahead. When asked, one of the boys, David Kemboy, said this to the scientist. He was surprised that he won the race because he did not think that he had the knowledge or the experience to win over a world champion like Nolan from Denmark. The Kenyan's 1988 Olympic gold medalist, Peter Rono, has attributed his victory to the great tradition of running, the good environment, the good food, and the upbringing that encouraged athletic performance. He has, however, dismissed the notion of some genetic advantage. The whole idea of this African somehow possessing some special genes also sounds quite absurd to me. I mean, haven't we heard this before, where genetic differences were used to segregate certain people? In addition, the genetic advantage argument only serves to dismiss the hard work that these people put in taking many months even years to practice and perfect their skills to the levels that we see in the international events the olympic medalist attributes his victories to interest and hard work i have linked an amazing scientific paper in the description that goes deep into the nitty-gritty science and the research behind athletic performance especially of the people in the east african region so do you think people People from this region of Kenya and Ethiopia possess certain special genes or can we attribute their victories to their upbringing and their environment? Is it nature or nurture? Let your voice be heard in the comments below. And we have a beautiful podcast, the African Scientist Podcast, where African voices speak science. It's linked in the description. If you like this kind of videos, please consider subscribing and also hit the like button so that this video can be suggested to more viewers. If you'd like to support the team at the African Scientist, why don't you buy us a coffee at these links? Thanks. This is the African Scientist, science from an African perspective. YouTube thinks you may like this video. Why don't you click on it and find out?